Listen, Larry, we're still talking about Nibiru. In the Archaics Facebook group, man, I have two posts where I just where I explain that long because there's there Sitchin has critics. I'm one of them. But one thing I can't critique is the fact that Sitchin did not invent Nibiru. I show in a book from 1903, 1904 called uh, called a uh, uh, Mag magicians and secrets of the ancient Near East or something like that. I show the actual book cover and photographs of what the book looks like on the inside. And I quote the source, the, the, the book itself. In that book, it explains that scholars in the 1880s and 1890s were already arguing about what Nibiru was. Some were saying it was Jupiter and others were saying it can't be Jupiter because Jupiter is this right here and this right here. And it says right here that that when Jupiter is in the sky, that Nibiru is called Shamshagar. So uh, they were already trying, but there, but there's prophecies about Nibiru, and some of them are harrowing. Others are really weird, as if Nibiru is going to bring a golden age. So uh, I call it Nemesis X object because everything that I have found is that Earth, Nibiru, the Moon. Uh, there's another Phoenix. And the dark satellite, these five objects, which includes also our world, are not native to soul because we violate this principal tenet of the Titius Bode law. The, the mathematical distribution of the planets is disrupted by Earth being here. But if you remove Earth from the, the equation, the mathematical distribution of the planets from Mercury, Venus, Mars, asteroid belt, which used to be Electra, uh, asteroid belt, and further out to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and it's perfect. Uh, Nemesis had Luna, which is the moon. It had Nemesis X object, Nibiru. It had Earth and Phoenix orbiting around it. So, and Tim at. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, I call it Nemesis X because that's what it is. It's an unknown world that used to orbit the dark star, which is called Nemesis.